Welcome to Coaching Skills for VISTA Leaders. A common role for AmeriCorps VISTA Leaders is to help the members on the team build skills to serve more effectively. In addition to training, coaching can be an effective way to build the skills of your members. I'm your host, Andy King, a Senior Training Specialist with AmeriCorps VISTA, and I'm pleased to introduce our presenter, Sharina Davis. Sharina is an International Coaching Federation PCC level coach and is a Senior Learning Specialist with Safe Horizon. Sharina is also an AmeriCorps VISTA alum. Congratulations and thank you, Sharina, for your service. Uh, and she has successfully served as an AmeriCorps member, a VISTA member, and a VISTA program director. Sharina is also an independent consultant who has facilitated trainings for VISTA, uh, for the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond, um, undoing racism trainings, and additional numerous topics. So, Sharina, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Andy. I'm really glad to be here to talk with VISTA leaders about coaching. Part of my life's work is creating connection that supports our humanity and well-being. Coaching directly links to that. I believe that as leaders, you can also create connections with VISTAs by providing peer support, such as coaching, that enhances members' experiences, including their well-being. Here are our outcomes for the session. We will start by looking at what we mean by coaching, what a coach does, and what VISTA leaders can do as coaches for members. We will define and practice two skills to support your coaching competency. Those are listening and inquiry. And finally, we'll cover how to prepare for a coaching session and look at a framework that might be helpful to use with members. We want you to walk away with knowledge and tools that will improve your coaching confidence and help you coach your members. We'll be using the chat for activities and we expect that there may be typos and misspellings, so don't worry about it. Let's start by creating some shared language around coaching. I would like to share a quote about coaching to get us started. Quote, simply put, coaching is where you work with someone to connect with yourself and what really matters. You redesign your environment, your career, and or your life, and then your coach supports and challenges you as you take bold action to make it happen." End quote. I like this quote because coaching is all about supporting people to redesign their life. We will explore how coaches can support and challenge others to take action and what it looks like. Let's look at a definition from the International Coaching Federation. They define coaching as partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative process to help people develop personally and professionally. I want to highlight that this is a holistic approach that focuses on the individual and what they want to achieve. It's a partnership in which the person being coached sets the direction and takes responsibility and is accountable for the outcomes. Next, let's look at a, what a coach is responsible for, what a coach does. Setting the foundation begins when you sit down the very first time with someone. Setting the foundation begins with setting a goal and a time frame, and then identifying a process for the coaching experience. Facilitate dialogue. That starts by listening to the individual, helping them discover and clarify and align what they want to achieve. And often that takes inquiry and being curious. In this dialogue, the coach asks questions and then listens intently to the individual's responses. Communicating effectively and facilitating a conversation with the individual encourages self-discovery. Coaching is not about giving people the solution, but helping them to find a solution within themselves. A coach guides the individual to discover their own strategies and become self-sufficient. 
cultivating learning and growth means the coach partners with the client to transform their learning and insight into action. Finally, a coach holds the individual responsible and accountable to be able to reach their goals. In setting the foundation, there are some strategies a coach would use here. A coach's mindset means having a courageous, emboldened attitude toward all people with whom one interacts. It allows them to bring out the best in people. Self-managing means paying attention to the person being coached without being getting caught in one's own internal reactions. That includes withholding judgment, giving advice, or holding back. Visioning is employed to explore the big picture and creating a visual picture of what is possible for the person. When a coach facilitates a dialogue, they ask powerful questions to evoke self-reflection, clarity, insight, and action. Also, they use active listening to hear things that people say that provide openings to explore deeper and to shift towards action. Coaches unearth values or the deeply held desires that, to, that guide us in creating fulfilling lives. They also challenge a person by asking them to stretch beyond their limitations and beyond what they think is possible. So they stretch their thinking and it sometimes results in doing more than they originally thought possible. The person can accept or decline the challenge as well as renegotiate it. And then the coach acknowledges and helps a person take in things that they may not th have seen as their strengths. To translate into learning and growth, a coach moves the person into action by help them, helping them co-create and move toward goals that are aligned with the person's values, visions, and desires. This could include brainstorming all the possible ways a person can create forward movement. Coaches request or ask for a specific action without being attached to the outcome. Results begin, requests begin with the phrase such as, will you? To hold the coached person accountable, a coach creates structures to verify the action plan is on track or to remind a person to actively live their values, visions, and goals. Today, we'll spend time on two skills listed under facilitated dialogue asking powerful questions, and listening in coaching. We will take a step further when we specifically focus on coaching in terms of the VISTA leader role. Since leaders aren't supervisors, they act as peer coaches to the members on the team. Peer coaches take into account the level of collegiality and collaboration you share with your members and the fact that you're not evaluating them, managing them, or telling them what to do. Instead, you are supporting them in their efforts to reach their own development and well being goals. Coaching, in terms of the VISTA leader role, invites reflection and action on topics such as self care peer support, cycle of service, et cetera. Some members will want to be coached, others may not. A key factor is that coaching has to be something the individual wants. It's really hard to coach someone who doesn't want to be coached. You use coaching when the individual is ready and is open to it. It is always useful to take a minute to distinguish a VISTA leader's role versus the, that of the supervisor's role with the member. A supervisor has a say in the member's performance and may be giving feedback to get them to improve their performance. A VISTA leader doesn't perform that evalu evaluative role. Here is an overview of what goes into the coaching process. We have the three core components that a coach brings into the interaction, presence, perspective, and powerful conversations. 
These are critical components of the coaching process that create a productive environment for coaching to take place. In this session, we are going to focus on two skills that are essential for coaching, which are listening and inquiry or powerful questioning. These are two essential skills coaches use to bring presence, perspective, and powerful conversations that facilitate the coaching process. Let's break that down. So we'll start with the first P of coaching, presence. It means you focus solely on the individual agenda, not yours. You will need to help the individual get to the source of the problem rather than getting stuck on the symptoms. To do that, you want to listen carefully so that you hear what's being said, but also notice what is not being said. Laser-like focus as if there is no one else in the universe. That is presence. And that is the place to start. You will take this a step further when we specifically focus on the skill of listening. Perspective is a way you can mirror for the VISTA member so they can gain another point of view. As you are listening to what they are saying, you want to mirror back to them how it comes across. That allows them to see the situation from a different point of view and perhaps gain new insights on the situation. In doing so, it's helpful to point to what is working and to call out their strengths and to keep them focused on forward movement. The third component is powerful conversations. And a big piece of it is the power of inquiry. You have to ask questions. You have to be curious. Remember, the goal of coaching is to help people determine their own solutions and become self-generating and self-correcting. In coaching, a lot of times people will ask the coach, what do you think I should do? The coach's role is not to tell people what to do, but through listening and mirroring and asking questions to give them a different perspective and help them identify the answers from within. With this approach, the person then owns what they come up with. It's theirs. Does this sound familiar? I'm curious to know if you've seen this in action. Andy? All right, so as Sharina mentioned, here's an opportunity for you to share your experience. We'd like to hear if you've witnessed the three P's in action. So we'll use the chat for this. If you don't have it open already, um, click the chat icon at the bottom of the screen. Um, so our question is this, have you seen someone employing any of the three P's? That is, have you seen them demonstrating presence, perspective, or powerful conversations? And if you did, what did they do? So um, again, have you seen any of the three Ps? And if so, how did someone demonstrate that? Um, just a reminder, be sure you're sending to all panelists and attendees. That way your colleagues will be able to see your contribution. All right, so um, let's see. We've got a couple of responses. Um, Thomas mentioned that he's seen it uh, done with uh, in teachers. So I guess uh, you know the presence in the classroom. Um, let's see. Felicia mentioned I've had the opportunity to practice this with my members. I learned a skill from my supervisor. That's great. So you've seen it in action with your supervisor, and now you're able to use that with your members. Um, Let's see, she goes on to say, I used to always be the one to fix the problems and I've enjoyed learning this new process. Great. Um, wondering what others have seen or experienced if you've um, you know, seen any, you know, in any uh, kind of um, setting or situation, seen these, um, these demonstrated, the presence perspective or powerful conversation piece. Um, you know, it wouldn't have to be in coaching. Uh, it could be just in an individual conversation that you're having, um, maybe a meeting or a training. You know, Thomas mentioned seeing it with a teacher. Um, 
They can surface, of course, in lots of settings, but they're particularly useful, as Sharina was describing, in coaching. Uh, and let's see, Ashley also says that her supervisor and the supervisor's supervisor um, have been outstanding examples of the three Ps. Okay, well, uh, no need to drag this out. We'll give you more opportunities to um, to share as we go along. Oh, let's see, one, one uh, late-breaking response here. Um, knowing someone is truly listening to you, knowing that someone is truly listening to you is empowering. Yeah, thank you for that, Rhiannon. Um, all right, so thank you for those ideas about the three Ps and how they might manifest themselves. Now let's go back to Sharina and take a look at inquiry. Thank you, Andy. Let's move into the two skills of listening and inquiry, which are two powerful ways a coach bring presence, perspective, and powerful conversations into the interaction. Let's start with listening. Please, let's read a quote about listening from Eckhart Tolle, author of The Power of Now and the New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's pur Purpose. Quote, when listening to another person, don't just listen with your mind, listen with your whole body, without the mind interfering. You are giving the other person space to be. It is the most precious gift you can give. Does that notion resonate with you? Listening is presence, and therefore it is an essential coaching skill. Here are details about the three levels listening can for you to be aware of, self-focused listening, other-focused listening, and transformational listening. Self-focused listening includes listening to your own thoughts, body, emotions, and intuition. Other-focused listening is narrowing your focus so that all your attention is on the other person or people. Transformational listening is all about listening to all that's happening in yourself, the other people you're with, and the environment. It's also listening for openings, new possibilities, emerging opportunities, and forces that generate change. What else is possible for this person or people? In coaching, you're aiming for being in a space of transformational listening. As a VISTA leader, you're also listening for an opening. The key is that listening is an active skill and with practice, you can consciously shift the focus of your listening. Coaches use active listening techniques to figure out when people are ready to identify problems and find solutions. Cues that someone is open to coaching can be statements or comments such as, can you help me think things through? Or, I'd like to bounce some ideas off of you. Or, could you give me a reality check? Or, I need some help. Let's look at how we practice listening. Let's look at a few categories of listening practices. There's more details about these on the handout. Nonverbal engagement includes looking at the speaker, making eye contact and listening with interest. Use your open body language, for example, to lean in appropriately. Also, it includes being aware of your facial expressions. Also, nonverbal engagement includes authentically responding with mm-hmm and nods or other non-interrupting signs of careful attention. Reflecting what you hear. When you are coaching, restate or paraphrase what the person has said to make sure you've understood it. This includes reflecting back to the person the feelings you've heard. Reflect both a cognitive understanding and an emotional understanding, which might sound like I understand and I can imagine feeling. To do this, integrate the person's words, tone of voice, and the body language to determine the full meaning of what is being communicated. Finally, another listening practice is to acknowledge what you observe. This means noticing, acknowledging, and exploring the person's emotions, energy shifts, 
nonverbal cues, and other behaviors. Make sure to do this without being judgmental. Let's shift gears a bit and take a look at a case study of a coaching session. We have a brief case study that shows a snippet from the beginning of what could become a coaching conversation. We'll read this together and then Andy will ask you to respond in the chat to a question. Leslie is six months into their second term of service, which they find both stimulating and exhausting. They work long hours and take online courses each day. They are not sure what they want to do once their service term is complete. Through lack of time and energy and due to COVID, their social set has been neglected and their family and friends are not happy at having so little quality time with them. Leslie wants to rebalance their life, but feels they have no options. Leslie asks you, what should I do? Now, Andy will guide us through the first question. Okay, as Sharina mentioned, here's a question uh, relating to the case study with Leslie. So thinking back to what we covered in this section on listening, how could you reflect back what you heard from Leslie? So we'll give you a moment to think about a reflection statement. And then if you would respond in the chat, again, sending it to all panelists and attendees, um, and think if you can uh, see if you can come up with a reflection statement uh, to share back something that you heard Leslie say. Um, and so remember in thinking about uh, reflection, you might want to restate uh, what was said so that you can check to make sure you heard it correctly. Um, or you might reflect on the feelings rather than the specific words, but, but focus on the feelings that you perceived or that you noted in, in what was being said. Um, you could also try paraphrasing and, you know, using different words, but, you know, capturing the idea and reflecting that back. So let's see if you um, um, have any thoughts about that. Yeah, and uh, Jeff, let's go back to the last slide just so folks can see that. And I'll um, give you a moment to read. All right, so we've got a couple coming in already. Um, yeah, you've all typed out well, at the same time. Uh, so a, a couple of you have said like, so just to check my understanding, um, dot, dot, dot. Sometimes you feel like you will need more support. Um, Let's see, uh, they enjoy service, but they're having a hard time keeping up with everything and have been lacking a social life. Did I get that right? Uh, it sounds like you want to establish some boundaries in your work personal life. Uh, acknowledge and validating your feelings of being overwhelmed and struggling to find that balance. Uh, yeah, another another vote for validation. Great, yeah. So thank you for uh, for these examples and ideas, Sharina. From what we've seen, did uh, any of those uh, stand out for you? I appreciated that folks mirroring the person's language um, and paraphrasing, and also checking in. Like, let me check on my understanding, and it sounds like. These were some great responses. All right, great. And if you're in the midst of typing, you can uh, go ahead and uh, you know finish that and get it in. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on um, to look at the second coaching skill for VISTA leaders. Thank you, Andy. Now we'll take a deeper look at building your skills around inquiry or powerful questions. 
you can use in coaching. We will use the terms inquiry or questioning interchangeably. Inquiry focuses on your ability to ask questions that reveal the information needed for maximum benefit to the coaching relationship and the individual being coached. In coaching, we are asking questions for a specific purpose and coaches use different types of questions. A coach asks questions with the intention of helping the individual gain clarity about where they are, where they want to be, and how they want to get there. When the individual answers questions, it's help, it helps the individual figure out where they need to go. We've put coaching questions into three categories. Some questions are intended to invoke discovery, to surface the basic facts of a situation, to gain greater clarity, clarity or to unearth possible options, or to explore the individual's existing insight. At other times in the conversations, questions are used for discernment, to see the situation from a different perspective, or to prompt the individual to prioritize potential situ solutions. Finally, when an individual is stuck, questions can be used to help dislodge them from their current position so that they can see other possibilities. This includes those that challenge the client's assumptions or get the individual to make a commitment or to take action. Let's look at types of questions in each category. Here are some types of questions that can be used for discovery. These are probably the types of questions that are used most often throughout a coaching session. Rapport building, often used at the beginning of a session when a, with a client to foster connection beyond the surface level, tunes into how the client is feeling and makes the client feel more at ease. An example is, how has your week been? Or asking something that is not too personal. Open questions expand the conversation and allows it to develop further. They often require thought from the person who was asked and their response can be long. An example is, what small steps can you take to get you closer to your vision? Clarifying questions help to make sure everyone understands what is being said, and it is also a way to bring out key points of the conversation. An example of this is, can you say more about that? Sometimes in the coaching conversation, the individual may feel overwhelmed by the scale of the problem or get stuck trying to decide among various options. Asking discernment type questions can help the individual realize what's most important or find ways to approach the problem. Scale questions can be used to measure progress or gauge the importance of something. An example, on a scale of one to 10, how committed are you to carrying out this action? Or on a scale from one to 10, how important is achieving this goal for you? Solution-focused questions help to break things down into manageable or achievable steps. An example is, what, happened, what needs to happen to shift X? Or, what will you do first? Sometimes an individual can get stuck in their progress towards their goal. Let's look at three types of questions that can help dislodge someone who is stuck or shift their thinking to new possibilities. Focus questions help to move the conversation in a positive or constructive direction if the individual's thoughts get negative or limiting. An example is, how will you overcome some how have you come over how have you overcome something similar in the past? And what resources did you draw upon to help you overcome this? Hypothetical, help open up the coach's eyes to imagine possible outcomes or solutions they might have not considered before. These are recognizable because they are future oriented. 
An example is, what would you do if you had unlimited resources? Miracle questions give coaches the chance to envision, feel, or describe how the future would be different. An example is, imagine how it would feel if your problem had been swept away. Describe it. In addition to these various types of questions, we'll look at some inquiry tips. To wrap up on this discussion on inquiry, here are a few general tips about inquiry. Empowering questions are those that are open-ended, build awareness of values, move towards creativity, and elicit new learning or new action. The questions you use are probing. They are thought-provoking. Start your questions with what or how, rather than do you or are you. Do you and are you are closed-ended questions that will generate answers of yes or no. Limit use of why questions as they can sometimes come across as judgmental or put the person on the defensive feeling like they have to justify their actions or choices. Keep questions short and simple and ask one at a time. Ask questions with answers that aren't already known. Stay curious, use follow-up questions to help the individual uncover what they seek and find their own solutions. There's no simple answer to these questions. So as a coach, you have to be comfortable with silence. When you ask the question, it's important to have a period of silence to make space for the individual to consider the question and develop a thoughtful and complete response. A coach needs to listen very carefully when the response does come, remembering to listen both to what's said and what's not. Resist the urge to jump in with suggestions. You want the answer to come from the person being coached. Let's take a moment to play with what we've covered thus far by going back to our case study. So as you probably remember, Leslie has been serving a year and a half. They work long hours and take online courses. They are not sure what they want to do once they finish. Their social set has been neglected and their family and friends are not happy at having so little time together. Leslie wants to rebalance their life, but feels they have no options. Leslie asks you, what should I do? Now, Andy will guide us through our second question. All right, and that second question is related to inquiry. So in a conversation with Leslie, what is a powerful question you could ask? Um, so you assume that you've done uh, some of the reflection and, and some of the pieces, but now um, now you've moved to a place where you want to move the conversation ahead. So what is a powerful question that you could ask Leslie? Um, again, we'll use the chat and please make sure you're sending to all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see your response. And uh, Jeff, maybe we go back to the previous slide. Thank you. And um, so folks can reflect on that. And as you're looking here, um, you know, you could be asking a discovery type question. Um, maybe you want to get more details or to clarify something that Leslie has said. Um, it could be a discernment question to help Leslie prioritize among these different issues that have been raised. Um, or maybe it's a dislodging question to help Leslie get unstuck. All right, so thank you. Your response is coming in now. Um, so one question could be along the lines of uh, what would what does uh, 
work-life balance look like to you? So trying to describe that a little bit more, um, get them to uh, articulate a little more clearly what it is their goal is, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, yeah, asking how your family and friends could support you along the way. Um, and here's a, a big sort of open question, or you know, maybe it's a, a little bit of a um, hypothetical or blue sky. Uh, how would you frame your life if you had all the time and resources you needed? Um, that's great, thank you. Um, uh, as Thomas says, at this moment, what is most important? So getting um, to clarify among these, these uh, issues to, you know, which of these is the most challenging. Um, yeah, and Annika says the same thing. What is your priority right now? Great, so lots of examples of different types of questions there. Um, Sharina, did anything stand out for you? What stood out for me was folks starting in with the how and the what questions and staying away from the why. These were great responses. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, yeah, great. Uh, so good job, those of you who responded. Thank you all for uh, participating here. And finally, we have one quick learning question for you here. Um, so you'll see a poll pop up on your screen. Um, and uh, the question here is, uh, which of the following is an appropriate reason for asking a question in coaching? Is it to see if the individual is being genuine um, or to get the individual to justify their actions, to help the individual imagine possible solutions, or to demonstrate your competence as a coach? Um, so once you've made your selection, click the Submit button. Uh, looks like maybe half of you have weighed in so far. Uh, oh, and I should mention if you're on a mobile device, if you're connected on your phone, um, there's not a poll pop-up um, there, so you wouldn't be able to respond to this question. But if you're on a laptop or desktop, you should see that poll question there. Looks like a few of you still have yet to uh, submit your answer. Make sure you Click the Submit button once you have your choice so that it gets registered. Give you five more seconds. All right, great, thank you. So uh, looks like over 70% of you have responded um, and uh, all of you got the question right. So congratulations on that. Thank you for responding. Thanks, Andy, for guiding us through those questions. For the last part of the session, I want to share some effective coaching practices that you may be able to use with your conversation with your members. As a practice, before a session, reflect on the following question to help focus your mind to get you into a coaching mindset. Ask questions. What is the attitude I choose to have about human beings that will bring out the best in the people around me? Once you are in a coaching mindset, it is helpful to check in with yourself to assess your attitude, body language, judgment, and other aspects of your frame of mind. Some examples are, what is my body language or energy projecting that this person may be aware of or react to? Or how can I replace any judgment that I have with curiosity and remember that something new is possible? In your handout, we've included a list of additional questions to use to assess where you are before you begin a coaching session. In terms of preparing for a session, you'll want to start to gather some discovery discernment and dislodging questions that you think might you may want to use. It's okay to have a list of questions in front of you, especially when you first start coaching. Soon you'll begin to see what questions elicit the deeper answers you are looking for and they may become a second nature to you.
Please note that you don't want to be writing too much, especially if you have a face-to-face -face meeting. You want your eyes to be connected with the person that you're coaching. Another thing to think about before the session is that it might be beneficial to use an assessment like a communications assessment or a goals worksheet to get a sense of where they want to go, where their strengths are, what their priorities are. You want to do this ahead of time so that the individual can complete this before your first meeting. It sets the expectation that the coaching will focus on their goals. So they need to have a plan to think about what outcomes they want to achieve. You won't be able to do that for them. You may be wondering about the time frame for coaching sessions in general. The answer is it varies. Coaching can happen in small or large bits. It can be an hour session. It can be 15 minutes. The coaching process is usually spread out over multiple sessions to give the individual time to reflect on what was covered in the session and do some work towards their goals. In life coaching, it often is a three month or longer coaching process. Also, coaching usually starts with a one on one conversation face to face if possible, but if not, you can do coaching by phone or video chat. Let's take a look at a framework of coaching to give you some structure to use with your coaching sessions. So let's look at a grow coaching model that you can use with your VISTAs. It's a fairly easy to remember and yet can be very effective in the context of VISTA leaders as coaches. G stands for goal. You start with getting the individual to set a goal by asking, what do you want to accomplish? Note that goals can change over time and you'll find one to start with. Next is R, reality. This is getting a sense of what's happening right now for the individual by asking, what is the current situation? Next is O, options. This is a brainstorming period, getting the individual to come up with ideas they could act on. Ask questions like, what could you do now? Or how could you handle this situation differently the next time this situation comes up? And finally, W is for way forward. This is the planning and accountability piece. Ask, what will you do and by when? You're trying to get a commitment from the individual to take action on one of the options they've identified earlier. Remember, keep the laser-like focus on presence, provide perspective, and ask the right questions in their powerful conversation to make it effective, no matter the length. After the coaching session, take time to reflect on the session. Coaching takes a lot of self-reflection and constantly looking inward at yourself as a coach. Set time aside to reflect on the session from the coaching perspective. Ask yourself things like, how did I do? Did I listen carefully? Did I pay attention to the individual's agenda? Did I ask probing or provocative questions that elicited good responses? Next, capture what happened in the session. This includes what was discussed, what the person being coached agreed to or committed to do. In my experience, what has been helpful for me after a coaching session has been to create a verbal self debrief voice recording. Using a recording supports being able to have quality notes. So I'm not distracted by thinking what to write or type because I can follow or edit from the recording. This provides something to review before my next section. So you can remind yourself what you're going to do what you're, and what you're going to follow up on. Finally, take time to move your body as a way to shift your body and your mind to, to transition out of the coaching session. You can do this by engaging in brief one to five minute meditations or grounding exercises. Let's make this more concrete.
that's a quick look at the GROW coaching framework. Let's use the framework to look again at Leslie's situation. Andy and I will role play a brief coaching conversation with Andy taking the part of Leslie. And I'll begin. Leslie, you asked me what you should do. How about I support you with this through coaching? What do you think? Uh, sure, yeah, I'm open to it. You mentioned that you're not sure what you want to do when your term of service is complete, that your social set has been altered, and you want to rebalance your life. Hmm. Which one of these do you want to focus on? What do you want? Um, I think I want to work on increasing uh, quality time with my family and friends. How do you define quality time with family and friends? Well, before the pandemic, uh, we would go out. We would do things. Mm -hmm. What types of things? Uh, you know, dinner, movies. Uh, we would play games, that kind of stuff, you know? And what's going on now? Well, not being able to go out uh, and be with people, it's no fun. So sometimes I'll get on Zoom, like uh, that's how we celebrated my best friend's birthday. And what opportunities are available now or soon? Uh, I guess I could make time to FaceTime or Zoom for fun with folks instead of just using Zoom for school and work. I mean, my, you know, my visa work. And what actions will you take and how will we know? Um, well, I'll text my family about scheduling a Zoom dinner date in a couple of weeks. And I'll send out a group chat with my friends about getting together this weekend for a Zoom happy hour. Um, and I can follow up with you. I'll send you a screenshot from both of those uh, get togethers. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, thank you, Sharina. After the session, the VISTA leader jolted down some quick notes regarding dates for receiving screenshots from Leslie and got up and got a glass of water. End of the role play. In this role play, the VISTA leader listened for an opening and demonstrated presence, perspective, and powerful conversations by using listening, inquiry, and the GROW framework. We hope this example gives you some ideas on how to use these elements together in a conversation and helps build your confidence in coaching practices in terms of your role as a VISTA leader. Andy's going to guide us through our final chat activity. All right, so here's another chance to come up with a question that you might ask Leslie, but this time we'd like you to share how you could use it within the GROW framework. So in addition to the examples Sharina just shared, uh, if you would select one part of the framework and then uh, come up with one question that you could ask Leslie. Um, so in the chat, you would start with the part of the model, whether it's goal, reality, options, or way forward, and then write your question. So we'll give you a minute to think about that. Um, you know, pick one section, uh, whether it's the goal, reality, options, way forward, and then a question that you could ask Leslie. Uh, and if you want, you could pick up on the conversation that Sharina and I uh, just role played, or you could go in a totally different direction. So we'll leave that up to you. All right, so we're starting to get responses coming in now. Thank you. Um, so Ashley says in the options part of the model, you could ask, what are your options and what might be the impacts of those actions? So um, asking a couple of things there to get, to get Leslie not only think about the what, but then uh, the so what, you know, what, what would happen as a result of it. Nice. Uh, 
other thoughts about questions you could ask? Oh, let's see, Jasper here uh, offers in uh, related to goal. Um, you could ask, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, I like the uh, I like the positive and open nature of that one. Uh, let's see here. Thomas has one. Um, didn't specify which part of the model, um, but maybe this is R for reality. Thomas, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But the question is, do you normally take time to make uh, to make decisions in your life? And uh, has this happened to you before? Yeah, and the, he confirmed that is for reality. Uh, Calvin, in reality or options, have you tried connecting with friends and family over Zoom before? Right, so getting some history there. Um, in the way forward, John suggests, what is the next physical action you need to take to make this happen? Great, and Anarchist says, under option, what is the next step uh, in your mind? And Nehemiah, time management with working with projects, but still available to meet with VISTA members. Um, and Rhiannon, in the way forward, what small steps can you take now? Great. So lots of different ones. I think we've covered all four of the, the GROW model um, elements. So good job. Thank you for all of those. Um, Sharina, any thoughts about these responses? Great, especially the one around what are the physical actions you might take or you might need to. So thank you all for being specific and really jumping into the GROW model. Great. Yeah, so uh, I'll just echo Sharina's thanks for your responses, not only to this, but to our earlier questions. And um, now we'll move on so Sharina can share some resources before we wrap up. Before we go, I want to point out some resources. These are also included in the handout. We've included several things mentioned during the presentation, and, we, and they are listed on the screen. One we didn't mention, but we have included is components of powerful relationships list. Many relationships in our lives are based on assumptions. We assume others know what we want and need. And when we step out of those assumptions that we have with each other and talk clearly about what we need, we can enhance healthy communications and productivity. This is a list of elements and practices that build powerful relationships that support stepping out of those assumptions. We also have three websites to recommend. IFC, I see ICF or International Coaching Federation is a center of all things coaching. It is a resource that provides understanding about the knowledge and skills needed for effective coaching. The Center for Creative Leadership is a worldwide leadership development organization, it is a resource that provides tools to advance the understanding, practice, and development of leadership. Also, 100 Most Powerful Life Coaching Questions is an article by Katherine Moore, who is a psychologist, organizational development facilitator, and positive psychology researcher. Her article provides various types of coaching questions and reading resources. Thank you. It has been my pleasure to spend an hour with you. And thank you, Sharina, for all this great information. I think a really fun and informative presentation. Um, so now we'd like to know what you think about our webinar. I invite you to complete a short evaluation. Um, your feedback will be important not only for Sharina, but it's also helpful for me um, as I'm looking for ways to make the sessions, you know, the most useful they can be for you and for other VISTA leaders. The survey is probably already uh, open in your browser window behind the Zoom, but if not, the link is available in the chat. Um, and we're going to see if you have any questions for Sharina. We still have a few minutes left in the hour. Um, so uh, for the Q&A, we'll go ahead and use the chat feature again. Um, so if there's something you'd like Sharina to respond to, or if you want a little bit more information, feel free to drop a question in the chat and we'll be happy to answer it.
And while we're waiting to see if any questions come in, I want to just hop ahead to the next slide to let you know about uh, next month's webinar. Um, it's on supporting members as they exit service, um, scheduled for July 15th at the same time. Um, so it's all about offboarding. You know, as uh, summer comes, you've got members who roll off and new members coming on. So this one's about offboarding. And um, we hope to see you there. Um, so I don't see any questions coming in. If you do have a question, we're going to stay here so you can type it in and just stay on the line. We'll be able to get to it. Um, but if you don't have a question, we will um, uh, not need to keep you here any longer. I want to, again, thank our presenter, Sharina Davis, for such an informative presentation. Also, thanks to my partners in this, Bethany DeSoblin uh, at Education Northwest for her instructional design assistance, and our production team today, Jeff Bannis and Kim Adams uh, at LSI. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you again soon. This will conclude our presentation. Thank you.